You've found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. I'm Missy, and I'm with Beth today. Hello, Beth. Well, hello, Missy. How are you this fine and wonderful morning? I am doing great. How about you? I am doing well. I, um, you know, again, we're in kind of a strange season of life, and um, the questions I've been asking myself lately as I sit in my morning chair is, what have you learned about yourself, and um, what has changed? What has changed about the way you do life and the perspective that you see the world with? What Mm. has changed in me? Because that's always the where where I land when I'm talking with my kids or with people I mentor. When we go through hard times, okay, there has to be a lesson in it. And we want to learn the lesson from that season. Because if we can embrace whatever it is in ourselves that um, needs a fresh perspective or needs a reminder of a faith over fear or whatever it is, um, then we can go forward and embrace that change, that, that change of perspective. Or maybe it's a change in a habit. Maybe it's a change in um, remembering where truth is found. I, I don't know. But um, what is it in our world, this strange world that we're in, what is the lesson that we need mm. to learn personally uh, yes, there's a whole bunch of lessons maybe as a as a community, as a nation, but personally, yeah. it's back to the Psalm 139, search me, oh God, show me, show me, I want to walk in your way everlasting. So yeah, that's, that's how I am on this fine and wonderful mm. Monday morning. Was that a little bit more than you were asking no, for? No, <laughs> that, that is awesome. And it's uh, kind of uh, got you know, the gears in my mind rolling and thinking, because as I've, uh, the thing that I've been thinking about is not only what is, what am I learning, but the fact as a reminder that other people are not going through the same thing I am. Right. They're, they're in the same storm, I heard someone say, but not in the same boat. Right. And maybe my boat is smaller than yours. Mine might even have a leak in it, or mine might be bigger mm-hmm. and able to handle the waves a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um it, Right now, my world hasn't changed all that much. It's different. It is, absolutely. Uh, But it's not rocked my world. Um, I I think it's twofold. One um, is, you know, my husband and I continue to work. So that's, you know, that's kind of a a normal all in Mm -hmm. itself, even though that's Mm -hmm. abnormal the way we're working. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, uh, spiritually speaking, this hasn't rocked me, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not, I mean, that's not patting Missy's back. That's just, I think, uh, it's the gray hair on my head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And having gone through... Other storms. Other storms mm-hmm. and knowing, God's got this. I may not understand it, mm-hmm. but I know, I know that I know that I know. And I know Him. I know who He is. And I know He is at work even when we can't see it. The thing that that I've really been drawn to is to try to offer more grace Mm-hmm. and more love and more understanding even when things that I see maybe trip a, a trigger in me or flip a switch in me and I might want to get mad or and understand that everybody has their own journey everybody has their own story which is true all the time mm-hmm. but but it's even more so now I think because as I look at the different people that I know and love and how uh our world our culture the things that are happening in our world right now are impacting their lives mm-hmm. Uh, it's hitting them differently, for right. sure, for right. sure. Um, you, you know, your storm may be financial. Your storm may be physical. Mm-hmm. Your storm may be emotional. Your storm may be spiritual. Uh, it's the, you know how you're being tossed and, and thrown about in the storm and what you're dealing with. And plus, it, it's always hmm, how do I want to say the we go through seasons of life, and sometimes we're on. And maybe not just firm ground, but maybe we're in better health. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're in better financial situation. Maybe we're we're better emotionally or even spiritually. Maybe we're walking closer with the Lord. So when the rogue wave hits, you know, mm-hmm. depending on where you are at personally in your life, that's going to tell um, a lot about how that impacts you. Mm-hmm. And your impact and what you're going through, wherever it is on the scale... You know, understanding that other people are being impacted, but maybe in a different way. Right. I think that helps. It helps with the story and with understanding and being able to offer grace mm-hmm. and maybe some space, you know, to allow people to kind of go through the journey that they're on. Mm-hmm. Because God is at work, and that's the whole thing. God is at work in each one of us. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Absolutely. And maybe working on different things. Maybe Mm -hmm. you're going through different things than I am. Maybe God is revealing different things to me than he is to you. But he's transforming each one of us if we allow it, Mm -hmm. if we yield to him. Well, even in our own little home, um, as you're talking about, you and your husband are both still working. And you live mostly away from your grandkids. Mm -hmm. So the separation is kind of your norm where um, my husband and I are used to seeing our grandkids always. And so that has been difficult in, in those weeks that, oh, wait, I don't get to see him for how long? This is not the norm. And, and you know, those, those um, I don't know, the sadness of separation. Mm-hmm. Um, I am beginning to understand that more and more, what I took for granted before the other day. Now, I would tell you my life hasn't changed too much because uh, I still get to encourage people through the truth of his word, just not face to face. So I feel like I'm doing what I've always done. Um, But my husband said to me, you know, my life hasn't changed too much, but yours really has. Isn't that funny? Perspective. Mm -hmm. Because he knows that I used to go. Yes. I, I I was out yes. doing, speaking to people and such, and now I'm at home. And he said, your world has changed a lot, but I haven't heard you complain. Oh, good, I said. <laughs> I'm glad. And I said, here's the thing. Complaining won't change anything. Mm, yes. You know, do I wish life was different for all of us right now? Oh, yeah. I wish, I wish we wouldn't know the word um, coronavirus. COVID-19, social distancing, quarantining at a personal level. I wish it could still be something that's out there and not in here. However, that is our world. Um, I think we've all gained a fresh perspective on the things we take for granted. I mean, I, I would guess my first outing as an infant was either to church or to a family gathering. Ha! Huh. Took all that for granted, didn't we now? Yeah. Because it was just the norm. This is what we do. This is life lived in this free country that we live in. Well, those are things that we have not been able to do for a time. And I realize as we are recording this, Missy, by the time this airs, maybe some of those things that uh, we were not able to do will have opened up. But let's not forget the lesson of perspective. And let's remember to see the, the beauty and the gift of the freedoms that we were without for a time. Mm. So, uh, yeah, perspective being everything. Those are the lessons that I want to hang on to and move forward with. I think another one is just that um, you think you have so much time with people Mm. and you think it's always going to be this way. Oh, I can, we'll go visit them, but, uh, you know, whenever, in a couple weeks or a couple months or sometime this year. Well, maybe, maybe, because like you said, um, there are people who are no longer with us, uh, some due to the coronavirus, some due to other physical um, issues that have taken their life. Life is precious, and we don't have that guarantee of tomorrow. We may think we're very healthy, and yet something comes along side us and maybe broadsides us, and suddenly we find ourselves um, physically in 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 need of help, in need of assistance, not able to take care of ourselves, whatever it is. I don't know what this season has brought to your world, but but for myself, I think where I have landed, as I hear of people who have gotten the virus, uh, no one in our immediate family has, and we're very thankful for that, but friends have, and you know, even now, as we're speaking, uh, one longtime friend is in the hospital, and you know, this is a hard place, not only for them, but every family member who loves them. That has changed the perspective. But here, right here in my core, what I have had to evaluate, evaluate and remember um, is that it's, it's my core I'm responsible for, mm. right? So my time with the Lord, that hasn't changed. My love for my family, that hasn't changed. My um, ability to encourage and reach out to people via text and telephone calls or emails and such, that hasn't changed. But that physical presence with someone to, to lay a hand you know, on an, on an arm, on a shoulder, or give a hug, that has changed. I can't do that with a lot of the people that I used to be in relationship with months ago. Um, 
However, what can I do to continue to allow them to know they are seen, mm. they are valued, they are loved, and they are appreciated? So those these are the lessons that I want to take away from this time. Um, I, I don't know. For you, Missy, mm. what is it? What's that number one that I just want to make sure six months from now I haven't let that drift into a, a place where I no longer remember? What's the core mm. in you saying I need to continue to do this in order to continue to remain strong and faithful to God's call on my mm. life? Well, and I, I do think perspective and gratitude are the are the things. Mm. And really, truly gratitude for things that we have now, looking back, know that we have taken for granted those times where we could be together, those times where we could gather together in church, those times where we were, you know, we, we really had no thought of not being able to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now that we have been in a situation where we, ha- that's been taken away for a time, mm-hmm. uh, even though it's... It, we're sacrificing that for others, and we, we're happy to sacrifice for that. We recognize what it is we're actually sacrificing. Mm-hmm. So what we had before, the the ability to be with family, to be with brothers and sisters in Christ, to be together in person, to gather in groups, all of those things, those were even fundamental rights that I never really thought too much about because I've always had them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so recognizing, wow, what if what if what if you had to live like this always? always what if what if what if your world was always uncertain and you didn't know the future and you you know you were facing something um, uncertain financial times uncertain uncertainty of food source uncertainty of so many things that we all have taken for granted because we live in such a rich and wonderful country now mm-hmm. i know there are people in this country that suffer i'm not overlooking that but the majority of people in our country, in in my world, certainly, uh, these th- these are things that we absolutely took for granted because mm-hmm. they were there. Mm-hmm. We had them, mm-hmm. and it was it's abundant. Mm-hmm. I I hope that as we um, look back on the lessons learned, that we can say, as Paul said, uh, you know where I'm going. Mm, I do. <laughs> I do. Philippians four. He says, "For I have learned in whatever situation I am." To be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret Mm. of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Him who strengthens Mm. me. And that really is where I want to land in times like this. You know, maybe this is not where I thought I would be. I'm sure Paul, uh, when you look at his, his heritage and, and his, um, you know, the, the, uh, acclaimed who he was and how he was taught and, and all of that, he didn't expect to end up in prison someday. But he writes these words from prison. Hmm. And he says, I've learned. And that's the big word right there, learned. Are we teachable in this strange season, season of life? Are we teachable and are we learning. Missy, it's time to take a little break. Uh, We'll come back after we take a, a listen to this. Hey, we're glad you've joined us at the table. You found a place to belong.
in the circle of friends. You're with Missy and Beth. And Beth, I love that you brought up Philippians 4 because <laughs> I, I thought about that verse a lot over the course of my life uh, as a Christian. And the idea that Paul learned his contentment. That's uh, a big word. It's learned. a big word because it's, I think that's true of all of us. We need to learn these things. But the, the thing I love about uh, Philippians 4, now you are reading clear at the end of the chapter Mm -hmm. or towards the end of the chapter Mm -hmm. uh, where Paul is saying, I've learned to be content. But before that, um, in in the first few verses, listen to what he says, because I think this is really key as we're thinking about, okay, how did he, how do you learn to do that? Mm -hmm. And you think about Paul, again, we're talking about Paul who was whipped and beaten and chased out of towns and, uh, you know, Almost stoned to death and shipwrecked, and I mean, he he lists all the things that he went through. But but go back to even before that, Paul, who who uh, has this uh, big old title behind him <laughs> as far as lineage and and importance. And, yes, I mean, Paul Paul was. It sounds like he was born kind of into privilege. He's right? a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and 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 suddenly we're hearing from him from prison not suddenly but over the course of time from prison he has learned this isn't something that was part of his wiring right, right? this what this isn't just uh, who he is and how he rolls he has learned mm. and it's the learning probably came through the hardest times of his life not the the privileges yeah yeah, and he was chosen by God. There was purpose right. in that. And if you go back and you read about his conversion and the reactions to the apostles of the apostles and the other disciples uh, about Paul's conversion mm-hmm. and how how God really spoke to someone and said, "Listen, I I've got plans for this guy." And and you think about it and you look at it and you and it, maybe in hindsight you can see some of some of God's reasoning and understanding of why he did that. But the point is, he has done that for each one of us. Mm-hmm. He has a purpose and a plan for each one of us, mm-hmm. and it, and how we're wired and what we go through. Those are the things he uses to transform us. Mm-hmm. But the thing I love about Philippians four, and the reason that I I wanted to go back a little bit, is that listen to what he says. And he he starts out, therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. And then uh, he goes on in verse four. Uh, he uh, two and three. He's talking to Yodia and, and Syntyche, uh, you know, encouraging them to be of the same mind. And he goes. So there's a little bit of a of a personal comment there. But verse four: Rejoice mm-hmm. in the Lord always. always. Again, I will say, rejoice. I just want to ask you, Beth. Do you think that's part of learning to be content? Uh, absolutely. It's a foundational. It's a foundational kind of uh, gem that he's giving us. You know. Just this morning, Missy, um, as I was sitting in my chair and just, you know, talking at, uh, talk, crying out to God, talking to God about so many situations that are going on, um, people who are sick and, and you know, the brokenness and all of, all of that, I was reminded that prayer does not change my circumstances, but it changes my focus because 
my eyes are on the only one who truly is in control and I can rejoice in him. So absolutely rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. That is a, a focus changing um, admonition that Paul is giving to us because truly there may not be a whole lot in your environment right now that you feel like you can rejoice for. Maybe your mm. world has changed a lot financially, physically, emotionally, relationally. However, you can rejoice in the Lord. You can. I promise you. You, you can. can. And uh, the message puts it this way. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in Him. Mm-hmm. Like, immerse yourself mm-hmm. in who God is and mm-hmm. what He's done for you. It, it, that alone can take up a lot of rejoicing time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you focus on that. The, are you reading in the message? That was the mess from the message. Okay, yeah. and I want you to go on, but um, I want to say this passage is one that our Tuesday morning small groups have, have uh, committed to memory at the start of this year. So it's pretty great. And I keep reminding them to continue to walk through that Philippians 4 passage that we learned. But the next verse, uh, different different translations have different ways of wording it, of course. And um, mine says, let your reasonableness be known to all. Mm. Others might say, let your gentleness Correct. be known to all. Uh, but overall, it's, it's, a, it's an attitude of... Of humility, reasonableness, gentleness, and why? Mine says because the Lord is near. I I really like that. I mean, in gentleness, that's never something that I would like describe myself as. I mean, with a baby, with you know, but just in regards to everyone I meet, gentleness. That's something I definitely have to work on. But listen to how the message puts it, and this makes me think: yes, that's what it needs to be. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side. Mm -hmm. Working with them and not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up any minute. Like, wow, doesn't that just change the whole thought of let your gentleness be known to all men? The Lord is at hand. Yes, 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 and and amen. Let let others know that you're on their side. Be on their side because you're on the Lord's side and the Lord is for men. He's not against them. Now, judgment is going to come from the Lord, absolutely. And God is holy and demands holiness, but he's provided this way for all of us to come to him. And as ambassadors of Christ, that's our job. So I feel like sometimes we look at this as a as we're battling against non-believers. Mm-hmm. That is so totally opposite of what is true. We don't have to be we don't have to be sucked into their way of life or their thinking. We certainly are going to be opposed in that in that way. But in terms of uh, in re- a relationship or meeting them or whatever to let them know, hey, we're on your side. Right. God is on your side. And and this is what he requires of us. This is what he's done for us. This is what he's offers you. And I'm not your enemy. I mean, you can feel like I'm your enemy, but I'm not going to be your, I'm not going to take, a, what do I want to say? I'm not going to take an offensive stance towards you. Right. I don't need to. Why would I need to? But I see a lot of my brothers and sisters taking an offensive stance toward everyone that doesn't agree with them or uh, line up with their way of thinking. or and it, And they do it, I think, in because they feel that that's the way to approach that. Mm -hmm. But this scripture is telling us something totally different. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Or make it as clear as you can to all that you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up any minute. So you do what you can in a gracious and loving manner. Mm-hmm. And then you let it go because it's not up to you. Mm-hmm. To The result is not up to you. Mm-hmm. I decided to look it up in the Passion Translation oh, yes. that we've been looking at. And it's very, very short. Let gentleness be seen in every relationship for our Lord is ever near. I mean, really, even in this season, especially in this season, always in every season, our part is to bring glory to God to reflect his glory here on this earth in whatever circumstances we are in, in the circle of influence that we have. Well, this is pretty clear. Let gentleness be seen in every relationship. Hmm. 
Not not let your emotions be seen in every relationship. Whatever you're feeling, just let it all hang out. No, let gentleness. Hmm. If we take that approach in our life with the people that we meet, the people that we are in relationship with, the people we, uh, you know, behind it, we're behind in the grocery store or mm. we're, <laughs> we're at work with, if we take that approach with everyone, we will know that we've done all we can. And doesn't that mm-hmm. lay another foundation for learning to be content? Mm-hmm. Knowing we have done everything we can in order to share Christ with others in word and deed. Well, let's face it. Contentment usually doesn't come from looking at what other people have, right? Oh, absolutely. Contentment comes from um, just recognizing what you've been given and being thankful yes. for it. Yes, and that's exactly... <clears throat> You know, what Paul is telling us here, look at verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Again, this is such a key element of learning to be content, right? Mm -hmm. If you're anxious, you're not content. If you're ungrateful, you're not content. If your mind isn't guarded by peace, you're not content. You're not content. Mm -hmm. So what I love about these verses is that those things are absolutely possible for us, Mm -hmm. regardless of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And how we can do that is by by offering those things up to the Lord and and leaving the matter in His hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And And the peace of God, which passes, surpasses all understanding. That's, that's a peace, that peace, Beth, mm-hmm. that peace that comes. You can't describe it. You can't manufacture it. It is supernatural, and it comes from Christ himself, who is our peace, knowing that the future is secure, and regardless of what happens in circumstance, he, God has everything under control. It, when we become anxious, we take all that back for, away from, from God. We, it's like you say, oh, God, I need your help. Here, look, I'll give this to you. And then you become anxious and you think, oh, but what about this? And what about that? And suddenly you're grabbing this all back from the Lord. Mm-hmm. That's the anxious part, the worry part. Well, you said that piece, which immediately made me think of the Amplified Bible. So there, I've Bible. heard you read that a time or two. <laughs> you think? Yes, I think maybe you have. But Bible Gateway is just such a wonderful, uh, website or app you can have on your phone. Uh, you want to know the different translations, you want to look something up, go to Bible Gateway. But this is where uh, the Amplified Bible leaves us with Philippians 4 5. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. And that's where we need to end today. We are at the end of our time together. But that's where we want to end today. This is all about bringing the presence of God with us wherever we go, whatever situation we're in, to allow others to see Him through us, even in the midst of a storm that we really wish would end. The storm will end at some point, and more storms will come. But who we are in Christ, that's what we take with us wherever we go. We're so thankful you joined us today. You have found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. This program was brought to you through the generous support of donors and listeners like you. To contact Circle of Friends Ministries, you can write to P.O. Box 345, Berlin, Ohio, 44610, or find us on Facebook at circleoffriends.fm. Program archives can be found at thelight959.com. Village Gift Barn in Berlin, Ohio carries one-of-a-kind finds, just as unique as you. Our elegant shop has everything you need to dress up your home and your wardrobe. We're dedicated to offering new, exciting merchandise. As you explore our three amazing floors, that's over 20,000 square feet, you'll discover everything from home decor and furnishings to a beautifully diverse women's boutique. Are your walls blank? Is your furniture blah? Do you never have anything to wear? We've got you covered. Stop Stop by and let our friendly, knowledgeable team help you create a look that's all your own. Village Gift Barn is located in the heart of Amish country at 4755 State Route 39 in Berlin, Ohio.